Okay. Dually Ironwood Run. Uh, so, last time I streamed Mortal Online 2, <laughs> I started a brand new character. Uh, much to my dismay, I actually deleted an old character, and I really never should have done that. Um, on another account, and made a Spear Archer. So, because I've virtually got a clone character on another account, I decided to play the more advanced one when I stream. It's way more exciting than watching a character uh, kind of at his earliest stages. So this guy's more or less identical to my uh, <laughs> Spearman Archer, except uh, this guy's name is Dantioch. Odin, what's going on? This is uh, one of my favorite games, actually. It's an... It's a first-person MMO. Uh, the best way I can describe this is massively multiplayer Skyrim with full loot. Uh, right now, what I'm going to be doing is getting kitted up. I need to grab a bow, some arrows, some bandages. I'm getting geared up to head out to harvest some ironwood. It's pretty... It's rare. It's hard to get. Um, it requires a specific skill set. So I will find it, and I will chop it. Yeah, it is awesome. I mean, there's a lot of complaints by this diehard player base, and I'm certain they're all masochists because I've never heard, I've never seen a more loyal player base absolutely hate on the game that they refuse to stop playing. It's pretty insane. Destroy that wood. <laughs> But uh, I really enjoy the game, so one of the coolest parts of this game is that it's a first-person MMO version of Skyrim, basically, but it's fully uh, local voice chat. <laughs> so that's kind of the most exciting part. What I'm looking for here is a short bow. The cheaper, the better. So a lot of, uh, a lot of this game, because nobody can see your stats, I've learned is about posturing. Uh, so this bow, as, as an example, 47 silver. I mean, really? It's impeccable quality. It's got a low strength requirement. Pretty decent max range. It's a short bow. It's nothing crazy. Um, it doesn't require stamina to hold back. Kenchi fan base. Oh, good call. It sounds exactly like Kenchi fan base. And... So as I was saying, a lot of this game is posturing. <laughs> so people will be deterred from attacking you if they see you riding your horse with a bow. They're going to assume that you're a horse archer. I am, but um, I find the times that I'm not carrying a bow, uh, people I are more likely to before. jump you. I'm going to grab 50 bandages. Uh, I may as well grab 100. 100 bandages and 100 arrows. Deal. Welcome back anytime. Put that up in my quick slot. Uh, bow. Okay. Bandages, horse food. We have axes for chopping. That one ended up in there. It's it's not for chopping, but I'm gonna use it for chopping if I break the other ones. Uh, we have a bow and arrows to deter kind of less than favorable bandit situations. Oh, there's PvP. Yeah, sorry. I should have mentioned that. That should have been the most out that that should have been the primary focus of what I was telling you about the game. Odin is that the entire thing is open world PvP. Um so I mean you die a lot. At least I do. 
Let me go put all this money back. I've got bandages, arrows, and horse food. Everything we need. I've got a horse. I don't have horse armor, which is actually terrible. Um, but the trade-off is speed, so my horse will actually move faster by virtue of not wearing armor. I need to name my horse. Okay, Scheherazade and Dantioch. So the plan here is to, we're, we're in Meduli currently, um, northeast, northeast. Somewhere around, I want to say, if this is Sausage Lake, then somewhere around here is the Colored Forest. So we're headed to the Colored Forest to find Ironwood. Check the status of the pet. He's not hungry. Well, I mean, he's a little hungry, but he's not crazy hungry. I'll feed him anyways. You can feed him while riding. So that happens often. He probably thought that I was chasing him out of town to, uh, to ambush him. So he just turned around and ran back into the guard zone. So a lot of players will do that. I'm realizing one of the stream tags is PvP. Oh yeah. <laughs> So right now I'm going to ride to my destination and I mean hopefully I make it there. Uh, we're going to head to the colored forest. So kind of one of the problems with streaming this is that there's only one server and one continent and one colored forest. So if you're watching this video and you plan on streaming this game, just remember that everybody playing, if they come upon your stream, will know exactly what you're doing and where to find you to kill you and exactly the right time to do so. If you're playing solo like I do, it's not the best idea. Hulu stream snipe. You know, I just don't think anybody will actually go out of their way to stream snipe me. So I'm not too concerned. Maybe it, I could just make more friends. Zulu, hello, what's going on? I like that Odin cups half full. More friends, perhaps. I think last time I was headed back this way, I got killed somewhere right around there. I go so you have to be really good with directions especially if you use this map there is an auto map um surprisingly i'm oh boy that's a cliff not sure it's a thing on youtube <laughs> i mean i'm not sure if that's a good thing no just kidding um yeah no i, I don't know that it's as much an issue on youtube either there's a lot of these strange rivalries that you see on Twitch between players in this game. What I was saying was that uh, navigating with this map is brutal because you, there's zero landmarks. Uh, there is an auto map on like a website. So that's pretty good, but I'm almost just as bad 
at navigating with the auto map, as I am the in-game map. Oh boy. See? This is what I don't like to see. <laughs> So there's trade-offs to playing at higher graphics in this game, I've learned. Um, when your graphics are maxed out, a lot of things render first, but players, because I'm in North America and the servers are in Europe, uh, for any North American players, there's a bit of desync. And so you'll often see people riding horses kind of warp towards you. So one minute they're very distant, and the next minute there's a player um, trying to jam a spear into your horse's ears. So right now I'm just walking the horse so he can recover his stamina. Uh, his stamina bar, actually. So I've got kind of a general idea of the direction I need to head. Um, it's north northeast, and then I just <laughs> turn around and head back the other direction, which should be southwest. But it's very easy to get lost in this game. I get lost uh, quite a bit, even when I have the auto map. Maybe it's it, which is crazy. It's crazy, like. Real map and compass stuff, I've done countless hours of in real life. And using the auto map <laughs> combined with the terrain in this game, you know what it is? There's no elevation markers on the auto map, okay? I need elevation lines. Uh, but because there are none of them, I find even using the auto map is difficult. It does give you a great uh, general direction for us landmarks though that players have marked up so that was crazy that's a weird spawn of three walking dead uh, Zulu at some point we had to forbid our membership to stream flute battles and even online because of Intel leaking yeah I was a uh, I played Eve online a lot I was a member of everybody's favorite corporation a goon swarm. So uh, I understand exactly what you mean. Taking part in a lot of those huge time dilated uh, fleet battles. That was amazing. Odin, I often find lag a lot in multiplayer games, probably because most aren't Canadian. I suffer the same problem, right? I'm not sure how well the towers in Ontario are uh, are getting that server info from Europe. There's the colored forest. Red trees ahead. Uh, I've been pretty fortunate so far. No, no bad guys. We've passed a couple other players, but nobody's been out to ambush, which is good. Depending on how kind of calm things seem on the way back, I may actually stop and take some time to uh, kill some of these guar and harvest their hides. It's easy money, or and it. Provides a ton of leather uh, for crafting both weapons and armor and shields. So again, just recharging the horse's stamina. <laughs> a fellow Ontarian. Yes, sir. Okay. So hopefully the old the crep the crepit shooter is uh 
Gonna be a good enough deterrent. Now, see, I've got in-game music turned on, but it takes its sweet time to show up sometimes. But when it does show up, sometimes you can't hear animals and people running up on you. Yeah, this game is insanely uh, good looking graphically, considering it's a single server MMO. Now, it cannot support that many players to my knowledge. Uh, they have some pretty wild claims. But I've never really seen more than 2,000 online. And then uh, a lot of server crashes do occur right around that sort of player mark. This is so. I don't know how many the server can support, but it's a single server game. And it's got insane graphics if you've got the computer for it. Now, there might be a little bit of loot in these ruins. Uh, so even though I'm kind of, I'm here for the uh, ironwood in the colored forest, I think stopping off at some of these ruins is going to be worth worth our time. I mean, I've never, oh boy, that's a Razorback. So those are angry, hairy pigs that don't like me. Well, I don't think they like anybody. Okay, there's a bandit there. What I did, I just uh, equipped my hammer and my shield while riding my horse, but did not actually equip it because your character will actually re or rather unequip his weapons, hop off the horse, and then you have to re-equip them when you hit the ground. So if you're if you're mounted and you're getting off your horse, just select your weapons so that they're in your those two slots. Get off your horse and equip them on the ground. It's much faster. Oh, another thing is this game is got serious directional combat and directional blocking. Or rather, <laughs> directional attacking and directional blocking. Of course, during combat, the music just vanishes. And in my last, uh, I streamed Mortal Online just the other day. Uh, and in that stream, I even titled it about Ultima Online. This game, if you've ever played Ultima Online or uh, heard of it, this game is a lot like that in terms of its mechanics. Um, I referred to it in my last stream as Ultima Online for Adults because it's brought that game down to the first person level and given it amazing graphics and improved on a ton of systems. <laughs> we sore fighting. That's awesome. I didn't even know there was such a thing. I've got uh, Oculus headsets, and that game Blade and Sorcery is hilarious. Okay, Ironwood trees. My poor horse. I had to buy a new one. I got killed last time. I was trying this on my way back. And, uh,. They destroyed my horse. But he was level 75, which makes him run quite a bit faster and for longer. Sports resort. Say that five times fast. Um, okay, colored forest. That's another thing. This game is huge. I don't know if anybody was paying attention up to this point, but I think it was like four minutes ago when I said, oh my God, there's the colored forest. It looked like it was right so close. Uh, this game knocks 
distance out of the park. It, it does so well in terms of its scale. Uh, if something looks far away, it is far away. One of my favorite aspects of this game so far is that you have to plan all your trips. You have to give it quite a bit of forethought. Even if you're just going between towns. Like, God forbid you're taking anything. Because <laughs> somebody will try and take it from you. <laughs> uh, I would say that if you're prone to getting frustrated at loss, this is not the game for you. Little check. Little, little look and listen. So these castles, um, I'm not sure if this one is... This is a this is a sexy Genshi mod pack. Man, isn't it? Okay, listen though. Listen though. I hope somebody watches this video and you're a millionaire investor slash developer. Um, because if somebody took Kenshi and made that game first person and an MMO and changed nothing else, I would never play anything else. It would be the best game ever. But, back to Mortal Online 2. This game's awesome. Okay, uh, I'm gonna slow up a little bit here. We're looking for blue trees. We're looking for ironwood trees, and they are very distinctly blue. They only show up here in the colored forest but everybody knows that. <laughs> and they also know that people like me who are streaming go to these places <laughs> to get ironwood. Okay, so there's one right there. We have a, there's a blue tree kind of in the distance. See if we can spot any more and kind of pick myself a route and not drive my horse off a cliff. Kind of, I don't know if that's music or somebody else's horse. Game music or somebody else's horse. Hmm. I'm only seeing this one right now. I do know that people have put some houses and kind of obscured them from view in a few cases. I'll head towards that one right there and then kind of make my way. So if I go down this hill, Head north, northeast, and then turn south, east, southeast. We'll we'll call it. Uh, I should be able to find some more ironwoods up there. You have to be careful with uh, traversing cliffs with your horse. Um, I mean, things like controlled riding, they help. They help you mitigate some of that that mobility error potential with your horse. But uh, your horse can fall down cliffs and die, and it's just terrible to have to run back. Odds are you don't make it. <laughs> so oddly enough, I've, I find it much easier to find the ironwood trees at night. This is kind of the other problem with this forest, is that uh, the ironwoods are surrounded by animals that like to attack you, like wolves and razorbacks. Okay, so I hear wolves first and foremost. <laughs> I feel terrible. 
<laughs> I'm sorry. Sweet, sweet forest creatures. Uh, upside to this, there's a lot of leather to be had here. Which is awesome. So I've got a ton of skill in uh, butchery. What you can do with animal carcasses, besides obviously butchering them on the spot, is you can take them to a butcher's table, and you get a lot more yield. Uh, but the carcass weighs a lot compared to its parts. I'm just going to put all of this stuff into the horse's bag. Can't forget the primary objective. <laughs> We're here for Ironwood. Okay, I might go on foot a little bit here. Slow down a little bit. I don't want to have to get caught dismounting, being attacked by an animal. There's the first Ironwood tree of this run. Now I'm going to warn everybody. If you're hanging out right now watching the stream, chopping lumber is about as exciting as it sounds. And if you are catching this stream later, feel free to... Lick through until we're on to tree number two. Because there's always excitement between trees, especially if we run into a player. But until then, it is rough. Get about eight at a time, and that's crazy because I think I'm at 90 ironwood lore. We're hoping to gain some ironwood lore here. Every couple dozen chops i like to use when it drops by a count but right now i'm getting eight eventually i'll be getting seven six five four etc etc i think i'm only going to take it for efficiency's sake down to four um i think that increases the likelihood that the ironwood will respawn so you have to listen for wildlife <laughs> But if I take the tree only to four, I think that increases the likelihood that maybe on my way out, it might be back up to six or eight a hit. Uh, I don't know why I just got on my horse. I kind of panicked. Can you butcher while riding your horse? What? It's the small things. So right now, actually, Ironwood accounts for a ton of my kind of my income. I kind of drift. I try to drift between Meduli uh, and I'd like to break into Tindrum. But what I do is I go in and I look at the Ironwood prices. Uh, I throw in moderate sized stacks for extremely competitive prices. And that's kind of how I'm making my living in Mortal Online too. Uh, it's not great. <laughs> but it's not unfun because the journey to and from the forest uh, as well as searching around is always pretty eventful just bandaging up I think a couple hits from the wolves when I'm getting attacked by animals I don't really try and focus on blocking all, too, all that much because they take a significant amount of damage uh, that is, you do a significant amount of damage to animals, um, and they don't hit for very hard. <laughs> it's not much, but it's honest work. Uh, honestly, it's super fun. And dungeon diving, uh, if you're playing solo especially, is rough. You can do it with two people. Uh, you can do it with three people. absolutely two people especially like that's a lot of fun to have a friend to uh dungeon dive with in this game the biggest issue is getting jumped because people like to roam in packs of three to five you know pk groups sometimes pairs though and then you stand a chance uh having said that pks pvp if you find yourself in these situations where you're going out trying to get yourself rare resources like ironwood uh trying to get yourself Bloods, 
ores and blood silks and iron silks. I don't know if there's such a thing as blood silk. Um, trying to get yourself these awesome named resources. Uh, the best policy is to always turn and fight. Unless you have a significant head start, just turn and fight. Uh, a lot of the time, EKs just need a deterrent. If you can hit their horse a whole bunch, they'll generally take off running because they don't want to get caught in the middle of nowhere having to walk back. Um, so top piece of advice is hop off your horse. It might die, but if you kill their horse, odds are they'll leave you be. Sometimes. I mean, and the other side of that is just go down swinging every single time. Is getting killed while running away sucks. So every once in a while, like I said, when it goes from eight to seven, or you know, whenever you whenever you feel like it, I like to do a stop, a look and listen, kind of check around my surroundings. Make sure there's no harmful animals nearby. Make sure there's no players. Last time I was cutting ironwood, I'm pretty sure there was a guy on the other side of the tree, five to 10 feet away. Aren't you an archer? I am an archer. I am an archer, but this game has such a broad skill set. You have to have um, eye mounted archery, for instance, to be able to even use a bow on a horse. But yep, I'm an archer. I have a short bow and a bunch of broadhead arrows. I primarily use them to get in a few early shots on enemies or to deliberately target enemy horses if I'm being chased. But when it comes down to it, uh, if even if somebody's shooting at me with a bow, unless they're a, a class in a race that is going to be significantly faster on foot than me, then I'll just run at them with my melee weapon, uh, archer or not. I use shields personally, and they soak a ton of damage from archers. If their arrows hit where your shield is at, kind of just in the general vicinity, it just adds to your armor overall, so it's great against archers. And this character is a shield crafter. He's a shield smith. Now, there aren't a ton of shield smiths in the game because... Using a shield is not considered one of the metas. Uh, so it's a bit of a niche market, but other people who use shields, uh, I find that selling shields is fairly, fairly easy. It's fairly, they don't stay on the market too long. And if they're really good, they sell pretty quickly. So I've maxed out all of my shield crafting with this character. And uh, some of the shields he makes are actually really decent. This one here, I don't know why I called it Iron Spider. I made it out of Anthropod Carapace, which is probably why. And uh, Malarium, which is, I'm pretty sure it's teeth. Like big, huge teeth from pigs and stuff. But uh, it's got insane stats. Like 23, 63, 51 for a, just a large round shield with subpar materials uh it's an awesome shield something with similar stats right now i think is on the market for 20 gold 20 gold 29 gold a couple gold like that i know it doesn't sound like a lot um but 29 gold is expensive all things considered and the fact that i could knock together a shield or two uh you know out of this ironwood even that's going to put up those stats and kind of fetch that price is even more incentive to kind of rush out here and risk it to chop down these these elusive blue trees we really are going to be here a while we're going to be on the way to the next the next tree in a minute and there's going to be creatures and critters and other things between here and there but oh yeah the chopping. I don't like to go below, like I said, five, five, four, five on these. I'll probably go between each tree at around five, six in this case. Um, that will definitely increase. Actually, you know what? Let's try and get a thousand out of it. I know it's crazy. 
Look, I didn't put exciting in the title, Odin. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Becca, what is your favorite part of the game so far? My favorite part of this game has got to be uh, dungeon diving. Dungeon diving and the risk that comes with that. Dungeon diving in this game really, really it reminds me of the PvP aspect of Dark and Darker when I played the uh, open beta for that. Dungeon diving in this game has that same sort of that risk associated with it. You could be doing so well against NPCs uh, you could have a ton of loot, and you're on your way out, excited <laughs> to sell all of it and make a killing, and then there's other players waiting around the corner. And the best part of it is that they can talk to you <laughs> while they chase you through the dungeon. So that's my favorite part of the game, is the, the kind of the sense of danger and then the social interactions that occur. I find, for the most part, people can't help but... Uh, even with voice chat, role play to some degree. I mean, there's only so many ways, you know, you can tell somebody to drop all their gear out of character or rap. You know what I mean? Drop your gear has sounded the same uh, for the past several hundred years, I imagine. Okay. So the plan, I believe, was to go east, southeast in search of another... Ironwood tree. So we won't we won't ever find an ironwood tree outside the colored forest. So if we start to drift outside the colored forest, there's no hope. So these trees on the right, none of them are colorful, which means we're kind of moving outside of it. My character is this fellow. He is a human uh, or a tindramine, I believe they're called, which means he's from the city of Tindrum, this portion of the continent here. It's actually a massive city. Okay, what are those things? Oh my god, dogs. Uh, okay, so I'm going to equip my hammer. <clears throat> going to equip my shield. And hop off my horse and see if I can deal with these dogs. Now, the issue here, right, is if you die, you're done for. <laughs> Uh. Stop. Stop. Oh my god, there's a bear? You're kidding. This thing hits like a truck. That was... No! Gotta go. Are you kidding me? So many bears. Survive. Okay, which way am I going? East? So if I just turn right around and go west once I heal. So I'm using bandages right now. Um, Turn around and go west to heal up. Get past that bear if I can and actually loot those, like skin those corpses. That'd be great. That was crazy. Just one animal after another. I'm kind of just staying ahead of this bear right now. Oh no, where's their stuff? Come on. another thing if you're ever trying to find something you have to pay attention to your surroundings otherwise it's very difficult to find out where where you were fighting where your body was where you were hunting oh I see what I mean Odin I told you between trees Oh my gosh. Are you kidding me? Oh, why did I just put my weapons away? 
That was a panic. That was a panic. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Trying to butcher carcasses. Okay. Okay. Put all this stuff in the horse. Everybody relax. Feed the horse for being awesome. Heal up. So this is, you know, this is usually right around the time that a player shows up. They're all, what up? Give me all your stuff. And then kill you anyways. Ha! Not that I'm jaded. Now where? Further west, maybe. I think I, I kind of, I can't, I kind of went on a tear. We can find them. And we're looking for blue trees. Oh, I'm so sad. It could just be me. I could just be terrible at navigating. That little cue right there is my horse getting stronger, which means he's leveled up. Oh, I should heal up some more. Must be the smell of blood attracting everything. You might be onto something. Speaking of uh, the smell of blood, wolf brush. So there's always, there's all these uh, kind of resources like wolf brush, step nettle, a lot of plants that you can harvest to feed your horse, keep them loyal. I must be going crazy. Maybe we'll just never find it. I'm gonna hop on the horse and take a look around. Problem is, I think loot bags are kind of this, this earthy brown. <laughs> so if they are around here, it'll be hard to find them anyways. Oh, what's that? What's that? What's that? Nice. Elvis's loot. And the bear should be. The other bear should be around here as well. Wow, this is crazy. What a what an insane what an insane haul so far. Good thing I have this large bear. Uh, you can get small horse bags. They don't weigh your horse down as much. Um, but they do carry just as much weight. They just don't have as many spaces. Where's the bear's bag? Come on. There was absolutely another bear that I killed around here. Is that it? Oh, found ya. Found ya. Uh, Zulu, are there healers in the game? So there are mages in the game, and you can play them just like a healer. There's healing spells. Uh, I don't know that there's specifically a healer, like a priest. I don't believe there are. Um, but I know that you can play a mage character and have a variety of schools of magic, and in one of them are healing spells. Which, I mean, every time I've had a mage in my party, party, there are no parties in the game necessarily. You just kind of talk to people and say, hey, I'm headed here. Do you want to come with me? I could use the help. Could you? And if they're a mage, I've often found that they play the role of healer uh, more often than not. So we need to get some height here and find ourselves another blue tree. Because I think that's the one we came from right there. So I find myself leaving the colored forest here for some reason. I must be kind of at the northmost extreme of it. 
I come on. Did you see those things? I was pretty lucky that I found them that quickly. I had a good idea of where they were. Uh, but if you get too far away, for instance, if you die and you have to go to a priest and get revived, uh, it can be extremely difficult to make your way back to your body. I didn't find my last one, and I had a ton of stuff. It's actually kind of a... What is this? Please tell me that's a cool flower. Nope. <laughs> oh boy, not great. Maladitos? Doesn't sound like murder. Uh, how's it going? You know the way to the nearest ironwood tree? One sec, one sec, I can't hear you, it might be me. Might be me. No, we're good. Are you talking? Oh, can't hear you at all. Can't hear you at all. Can you hear you? You, you can obviously hear me. <laughs> uh, I did see. I, I haven't seen anybody. I came from. Uh, I came from Meduli. They're blue trees. They're blue trees. Have you seen any blue trees in your travels? <sighs> oh, northeast. I think we just came from that way. <laughs> 300, 400 meters, there's an area. Awesome. I'll take a look. Thanks a lot. Be safe. I realize he did not ask for any kind of report <laughs> about bad guys. I like to kind of tell everybody the directions that are clear, that I've come from, that I know are safe, uh, because a huge part of this game is uh, really EK mitigation. Wow, okay. Yeah, I was missing the majority of the colored forest, apparently. Get away from me, pig. That's kind of colored forest. I don't see any blues, though. Ooh, I'm going to get on this kind of hilltop point here, this high ground. See if I can find a blue one. Oh, there's one right there. Ah, they're kind of tucked away. That is a sweet spot for a house. So that's a player house. Um... Oh boy. Okay, don't hit the horse. <laughs> Gone by pig. I'm Dantioch, slayer of razorback pups. <laughs> Piglets. Razorback cutlets. Cooking, speaking of cutlets, cooking is a skill in this game. This is a crazy haul. Like, this is a great, this is a great haul uh, for just coming out to get some ironwood. We'll almost have a thousand ironwood, a ton of leather. Uh, I hope I didn't just lose that tree. I'm pretty sure it's down this way. Come on, Shahrazad. Where did that tree go? Ah, there you are. Oh, okay. Ah. 
Always wolves. So many wolves. If you don't hit uh, a creature with the correct part of your weapon, you're not getting, going to do full damage. Uh, and each weapon has kind of a different damage profile on it. Piercing, blunt, and slashing. Uh, all three of those damages are entirely dependent on the direction from which you attack, the type of weapon, and the part of the weapon you attack. Uh, so the stats on my hammer here, you'll notice it has zero slashing damage. So there's no part of it that can, that can slash. Uh, it only does blunt damage and piercing. Now the blunt damage it does will be on overhead swings and side swings. The piercing damage is only going to come from that little kind of, that, that hammer nub. <laughs> Right there on the tip. Ah, just like that. So he jams the nub into his opponents. And so that's going to be such minimal piercing damage, uh, no matter how good you get with hammers. So distance control in fights is another huge facet uh, of this game. If you cannot control your distance from your opponent, he can actually just stand inside your range. So one of the strategies to deal with players who use uh, pole swords, spears, weapons like that is to just crowd them. Because uh, you can get inside the range of their weapons and they can't do any damage. The same kind of applies for long swords, but a lot of people are kind of like little crackheads uh, with two-handed swords in this game. And dance and jump and do 360 degree spins in the air. Uh, I'm not sure about anybody who checks out this video or just hanging out for the stream, but when I play first person games, I really, really like the visuals in the game and 360ing with my mouse. It's not, I'm not, I'm not down for that. Uh, there are better ways to fight in my opinion, uh, but a lot of these guys that you're going to come up against in this game who are solo or duo PKs, they're gonna have two-handed swords and they're gonna be mounted archers, usually. And when they have their two-handed swords out, they like to turn around and jump and look at the ground a whole lot and spin around really quickly. And uh, they're fairly easy to deal with if you just hold your blocks and swing through. I mean, how can they possibly know what I'm gonna do if I don't know what I'm gonna do? Now I know this is the most exciting part, but we have to keep our ears peeled for wolves and pigs because I've been attacked by a lot of them. Yeah, um, two-handed swords are fun, but that's just embarrassing. Yeah, there there are much better ways to fight, especially if you're competent at, at reading your opponents properly. Um, the guys who jump around and dive and look at the ground, and you can tell when they're doing it because, in, I mean, fortunately, because in this game, your character actually bends over and looks down at the ground and looks up. You know, your camera, your head goes where your mouse is pointing. Uh, so it's really easy to tell them apart. And another great trick with those guys is when you see them stare at the ground, just move away from them. Because they're going to unleash their swing, trying to change the direction of the attack. Uh, without their camera pointing at you necessarily but you can just step out of range they're going to assume you're still in range better to be a uh, controlled uh, defense focused combatant I think but then again we're talking about, I'm kind of biased here. I'm a shield smith. <laughs> I make great shields and I love using them. One thousand. So that, I mean, this has been a lot of effort. Now, I'm, I'm going to kind of my next plan with my ironwood Normally what I do is I get a couple thousand ironwood across, you know, a couple a couple plays. I'll hop on, grab a couple hundred, hop on, grab a couple hundred. 
and I'll sell that iron wood in blocks of 500. Uh, kind of what I intend to do here is craft a bunch of very high quality shields using iron wood and another material that I'm extremely knowledgeable in with his skills. And hopefully the turnaround on wood will be like the value will be there. Now that's very difficult to do, considering making a good shield takes about 700 ironwood. Usually. You can make smaller shields for 540, 550 ironwood, but consider that it's taken me this long just to get, you know, you're getting them eight at a time. There's no way to speed up Lumberjack. It's gotta be the worst kind of resource grind this game has to offer. However, it can be extremely rewarding because you can make really great gear. It's also very useful for bows. Now, I don't know how ironwood bows would work necessarily. I don't imagine that a heavy kind of um, extreme durability providing wood would necessarily be good for building a bow. There's a lot of experimentation and crafting in Mortal Online 2, which also sets this game apart from a lot of other games. It reminds me the most of Star Wars Galaxy's crafting system. Uh, different materials, different qualities of the same materials. For instance, you have full grain leather, quality leather. Uh, pretty sure you have different types of reptile scales or leather, troll skin scales leather or something uh this game reminds me a lot of star wars galaxies in that it has a different variety of furs yet yeah, guard fur guard fur is a perfect example gourd the horse. I feel like if he makes noise, he's hungry. Maybe there's animals nearby or something. Maybe he's getting edgy because there's bad guys. still getting eights did this tree just reset because i walked onto the other side of it is that a thing or did i just get lucky for a respawn oh my god if i've been missing half of an ironwood tree this entire time i'm gonna be super sad Just move to the other side and chop it, obviously. Who wouldn't think of that? Anybody. Ever. Look, I don't know if we have proof of this, okay? I'm gonna have to test this on the next ironwood tree. Headbutt in my microphone. I can't believe it just. What a. This is insane. I mean, I know the last thing that anybody hopping onto this video wants to see is more wood cutting. But this is great news. This is such great news.
nonetheless this is some limitless ironwood tree listen if i've stumbled upon some accidentally bugged always gonna have eight ironwood ironwood tree uh this could be an eight hour long stream <laughs> why wouldn't somebody want to watch this this quality content Okay, so that's the, another unique thing about these trees is you get amber from it and small rough amber, rough amber, that stuff sells exceptionally well on the market or just to vendors even. That's another thing about Mortal Online too, uh, if you weren't aware, you can't craft items and sell them to NPCs. You can only craft items and sell them to players. So there's no way that you can I mean you can you can sell looted items not weapons but most looted items like resources okay so you can sell most looted items like wolf fur teeth etc to vendors um, but you don't get a ton of money for them so there's very little risk of artificially inflating uh, sort of the economy in this single server game since most items that can be sold to vendors have to be looted from creatures and they don't sell for a ton you can't really artificially inflate the economy um, in Ultima kind of what happened was that you could just craft for instance bows Let's say you want to go out and cut wood, just like I'm doing with this character, and all you want to do is churn out bows. In Ultima, you could sell those bows to NPCs, and voila, out of thin air, you've created millions of gold, or hundreds of thousands of gold. And then you can purchase things that are game-altering in terms of a huge house, um, you know, great weapons and gear, without without putting in much effort so in this case we at the very least have to go through the effort of selling the goods that you craft which i enjoy because it inspires the crafter to become good at his or her craft I can't believe I'm still getting aid from this. This is insane. I'm back. I'm just, I'm taking a brief step away from the tree. <laughs> Making sure I'm not dreaming that I've hit some kind of limitless ironwood tree and hoping that I can remember where it is for all time. Making sure I'm actually getting what it's saying every time. Go to 200. I can never leave here. I don't know what to tell you. Oh my goodness, leaving here would be such a crime, but there's absolutely no way I chop wood for 36 hours on stream. And I wish there was a way to, oh, it went down. It went down. We haven't found anything insane. We just got extremely lucky with an extremely full ironwood tree. Okay, we're not going for gold here. I figure we take, at most, one more tree. We search for one more tree. Hope we can survive the trials that will lay between this tree and that. We drain it to five or six. I hear a horse. Spring box. Looks like it's almost evening. It kind of. <laughs> oh, the darkness is your ally. Uh, the darkness is kind of your ally in this game. 
when you play solo. It makes it more difficult for other players to see you. Okay, we switch sides of the tree. Let's. <laughs> oh my god, hold on, hold on, hold on. We're back to six. <laughs> but if I go over, you're kidding me. If this is seven, I'm going to lose my mind. I really hope that you can do two sides of every tree. What? There's two sides to every tree, as they say. Got nothing, okay? <laughs> I don't, I can't believe we're still on this tree. Still doing seven at a time? Okay, six. Okay, okay, okay. We're out of here. We're out of here. Uh, what I'm gonna do is the hammer and let's check if there's four. You know what? Um, that's not the that's not the worst idea I've heard. So I'm going to check if there's four sides. If this is eight, uh, that's it. No, okay, 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 okay. Maybe it's a triangle. No. All right, farewell, Big Blue. Wow, what a run. That was over a thousand ironwood from that tree, I'm pretty sure. Uh, especially if you're still here watching this stream, I commend you <laughs> for dealing with this run-on dialogue. Uh, but if you're catching this later and you skipped up to this point, we got one more tree in the tank before we try and make the Meduli run. And Meduli, again, is the city that we started the stream in. It's kind of the city I'm, I call home right now, my home base. We've spotted another ironwood tree, and we are exceedingly close to a town called Faburnum, which is actually often surrounded by EKs. And this is an extremely in the open, easy to see ironwood tree. Not the best. Oh, wolves. What? Didn't I say something about put my hammer and shield on before I left? Uh. This is great. This is, uh, this is crazy. If I was smart, I would head back right now. <laughs> uh, if I make it back, just what a run. And then I'm going to go try and take on some bandit camps. Bandit camps get a little hectic. And if we can prove that there's two sides to this tree, I'm also going to lose my mind.
Is that, that is just insane timing. Odin, you said this is it, folks? You said this is it? My axe exploded in my hand. But I'm gonna try something. This is a combat axe. I like to kind of play with, uh, so th this axe only has 70 durability. It's a bearded axe. It's meant for combat. Whereas these are actual woodcutting axes. I like to play with uh, the different types of axes. I've tried a two-handed axe, hoping to get more wood yield. It does nothing. So now I'm gonna try this bearded axe and see what happens here. It seemed pr pretty standard, pretty standard. I wonder what my iron with lore is at. Uh, try not to get overwhelmed by the skill list. It can be overwhelming at first, but it becomes extremely evident uh, if you just stare at it a little. There's parent skills and there's kind of sub skills. So I'm looking at petrology because this is for trees. And wait, nope, not petro botany because this is petrology for rocks. Disregard that last comment. Uh, botany, obviously, for plants and trees. And I have gone down into dendrology because I am a lumberjack. I've got graywood lore, whitewood lore, dapplewood, firmwood, and now advanced dendrology. I have ironwood lore, and we are at 90. Uh, 93, it's effective, my, oh, advanced technology, ironwood lore, I'm actually at 87, uh, but it's effective skill is 94 because my high intelligence skill adds a modifier to it. If you have any questions at all about the skill tree, uh, feel free to ask while we, you know, undertake the exciting task of chopping ironwood and hoping we don't get pk uh, or leave a comment after the video if you're catching this later and fire off any questions you have if i don't answer them which i probably mostly almost guaranteed will uh i'm sure that other members of the mortal online 2 community because they're a super interactive community and passionate and they're mostly helpful i mean there is the you know standard amount of online community sarcasm in this game uh, but by and large, I have found the community to be extremely helpful whenever you ask questions. Uh, so this is actually going to work out perfectly, I hope. Night, and a nighttime here is falling. So right as we wrap up uh, with this ironwood tree, we just need to get this down to generating seven hits head to the other side kind of confirm a theory here about ironwood trees odin and i uh have something going on here a bit of a science experiment And once we get down to seven, the idea is that I'm going to hop around to the other side of the tree and see if I can start getting eight again. And if that's the case, then I've been doing ironwood trees all wrong. And we may have cracked the Da Vinci ironwood code. Okay, 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 okay. Moment of truth. We've hit seven. Opposite side of the tree. No, okay, it meant it might have been some kind of errant. Okay, okay, try this side. No, no, let's try aiming high. What if we aim high? What happens? Seven's all around. I think we had a unicorn ironwood. We'll take this down to, we'll take this down to uh, six, I think. We'll get 300 more. That'll put us at 3,000. I, you know, honestly, for all this effort, a 98% chance that I get murdered on the way back and it all gets taken. Um, 
I think we're gonna take off here when I have about 3,000. So, not many more, not many more chops to go. What? No! <laughs> so, if you notice, you can chop wood with anything. Uh, for some reason, I just equipped my hammer. Now, a lot of people I've met have been nice on the road. I mean, we even saw somebody on the way here. He's not a lumberjack. He was just passing through the colored forest. How are we sitting here? Oh my goodness, 200 more? There's no way. We gotta get out of here. I'm already pushing my luck. Hammer and shield are out. Feed the horse. Oh my god, he ate almost all of it. Bow is out. Now we have the deterrent. And our destination, Meduli, because we're somewhere up here. It's going to be southwest. Uh, because I'm in the colored forest, I feel like I'm near the southern edge specifically. Uh, or once, rather, once I hit the southern edge of the colored forest, I'm going to try and go kind of more west-southwest. Now, if you're riding your horse through the woods, you have to be extremely careful for these cliffs. Uh, if I had ridden off here, I'd be dead. <laughs> my horse would be dead. And all of my items would be all over. <laughs> well, they'd be in a neat and tidy little bag, but free for the pickings. And I would probably never find my stuff again. I certainly wouldn't be able to carry everything that I have spent the past hour and 17 minutes gathering. I'll be especially sad if I get murdered. Yeah, getting home is the hardest part. Uh, so that, that is a bandit camp. South, southwest, I say. South, southwest. I am not. I have too much, uh, too many resources. Otherwise, I would actually stop and tangle with a bandit or two here. My plan is to drop off all these resources. Hopefully, I can get them home. And once I've done that, craft a couple shields. Merchant of Meduli style. I'm specifically the shield merchant of Meduli. Craft a couple shields. And put them up for market, then head back out and see what I can't do about killing a couple bandits, getting some clade experience, which uh, add kind of allow you to add racial bonuses to your character, which can affect permanent stats, increase stat caps in the case of human characters like mine. And make you stronger overall. If I happen upon another ironwood on the way, though, I don't owe oh my... He says, is this an ironwood? You're kidding. What is this? <gasps> well, I mean, I can't not. Pump charisma. You can't not, right? I mean, you only come to the colored forest so often. <laughs> and here we are. At least hit Nate's. Uh, we'll get that extra 200 to round out the 3k. It's almost sunset too. Probably more's more's the better. Really, the kind of more we get here, a little bit longer we wait. Let the sun go down. Travel under cover of darkness. I've got this kind of jet black uh, added armor, this leather armor going on here. I made it out of anthropod carapace, which is like spider shell, spider exoskeleton. And what else did I use? I'm pretty sure I used, uh, I wanna say wool, maybe, or leather. Wool or leather, one of those two. And I made my helmet out of malarium, which again, I'm pretty sure just huge teeth. 
molars. So close to 3,000. 45 more. 35 more. This is a great ironwood. But see what I mean? They're easier to find at night. They kind of glow blue. They also destroy axes. This thing is almost broken. Okay, 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 okay. 3,000 ironwood. <clears throat> kind of mission accomplished. If we can get this back home, um, I mean, effort for time, a lot of people might criticize. <laughs> but... That'll be about, if I can sell that all properly on the market, that'll be about 35, 36 gold. And with all the animal carcass and leather and bone and whatever that I've gathered, I should be able to tack on another five, six, seven gold. So I mean, I'm not a gold for hour kind of guy, but if you are uh, kind of the ironwood run to and from Meduli with the odd animal in between is gonna generate you 45 to 60 gold an hour depending on how efficient you are uh, and that's also entirely dependent on whether or not that people don't come to hunt you down and destroy you because that happens just as often as not I think Sunday nights are fairly busy for Mortal Online 2 so I imagine there's something to the tune of 2,000 players online right now. 1.8 to 2,000 players. And again, they're all on one server. It's only 400-ish square kilometers. So uh, the odds of running into people is pretty high. Navigating uh, mountains at night, not something I recommend, especially if you're new to Mortal Online 2. And I know it kind of sucks for this stream because it's so dark. I would love to turn on a torch. Uh, but A, I don't have one. And B, it makes you stand out like a street light <laughs> to people who would want to harm you. So I'm going to kind of trot here. Trotting keeps your horse's stamina fairly steady. It actually goes up by one or like one point every second. You can see that under Sherazad's name. Uh, the kind of the general idea is you, when you're traveling long distances, trot until you're full, uh, sprint two, three, four hundred stamina down, and then trot again until you're full. Always try to keep, you know, a thousand, nine hundred stamina on your horse uh, for running away. Unfortunately, uh, meeting PKs usually isn't a 1v1 situation. More often than not, you find it's a two to three to five versus you situation. Nature of the game though, definitely strength in numbers in this game. Um, you don't have to be in a guild. It's extremely recommended by almost every player in the game. I'm not, uh, and so not being in a guild, I find myself hanging out in front of bandit camps, large dungeons, and asking other people if they want to team up to go in, which works. They're usually gilded, and in those instances, their guild tag uh, sometimes will help protect you uh, from what would otherwise be a gank because they're, they are, you know, they have a peace treaty with another guild or something that would normally be attacking you. Uh, it's worked out a few times. Uh, this would be a player place to keep. Another great aspect of Mortal Online 2 is player housing. I'm currently saving up to place my first house. And I'd like it to be one just like that. I think that's a medium house, fully up, fully upgraded. I really hope I'm going the right direction. I think I'm gonna start heading more like west west southwest
Knowing how certain terrain affects horses is... Oh, 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 okay, so that's another player. Just kind of some... Skirt in the edge there. This is an extreme uh, kind of ambush area. We are uh, approaching Meduli. We're somewhere in here. We'll see it's shortly on the horizon. You have to keep your eyes out for players. Uh, it's always good to look around, look behind, especially look behind. And another kind of suggestion, if you're about to be PK, you see somebody coming like this wood right here, this only weighs 30 kg, so I can carry this on my person. Um, of course we have 39 out of 73. If there's anything else super valuable in here, you know, uh, these these ambers uh, and these scoundrel heads, I may grab these things, right? Maybe even these paws, like anything that's a quick, easy sell that's not too heavy. I might grab those things because what bandits or PKs tend to go for first is your horse. But it doesn't always mean they're going to come after you right after. Some of them just kill horses, especially if they see bags on horses. They just kill the horse, and they just don't want the hassle of the potential of you fighting back. It happens all the time. And so if you have some valuables that you, know, you can actually afford to carry because they're not too, too heavy, it's worth it to just put them on your person. Uh, leave... Oh my... Controlled riding? I'm done controlled riding? Time to buy swift riding. Swift riding is kind of the be-all, end-all. Um, it takes up a primary slot. If you play the game, you'll understand. If you're just checking out this video because you're interested in the game, a primary slot. You only have 1150 if you're a Tindermite. Tindermine. Um, if you're a human, you only have 1150 skill points for primary skills. To max a primary skill it takes 100, which means you have 11 and a half skills you can max. Uh, swift riding or controlled riding, one of those two are a primary skill. Uh, but it is honestly worth every invested point because your horse runs faster and loses less stamina. When it comes to travel in general in this game, it sucks because it takes a long, long time. It's a lot of a landscape running simulator. Some days. The further the destination, the worse, and banking is all localized. So if you get loot on the other side of the continent, you know, if I get some loot down here uh, and my home base is Meduli, getting the loot back, much like you're seeing now, getting the trees back is the hardest part of the journey. Now, because I can't see anything, and I have no idea any longer where I'm headed, I'm just going in a general direction. Uh, this game is extremely realistic in terms of its lighting. Uh, the higher you have the graphics, the better the game looks, but the harder it is to see anything. <clears throat> what? Oh, dogs in the bushes. My heart just stopped. I thought that I got hit by an arrow or something. Speaking of, I think what I'm going to do is expand this log a bit and go to combat. Maybe game? No, combat for sure. Belbus bites you in six or for, for so. Okay, we'll keep it on combat to know if we get hit. I have no idea why I just got 40 ironwood. Okay, my horse is exhausted. I'm gonna hop off. And I don't know why I have an axe equipped. So your horse will gain stamina more quickly, A, if you're not on it, but B, if it's standing still. What a lot of players do is they'll ride their horse till it's out of stamina, hop off and sprint for a bit on their own before remounting and carrying on. And that's kind of what we're doing here. I normally wouldn't leave town without armoring up my horse. 
<laughs> but, yeah, I mean, money's kind of tight. <laughs> money's not tight, but I, I'd rather take the speed. When you put armor on your horse, he runs more slowly. Because I'm not an extremely competent mounted archer just yet, uh, it's kind of more valuable for me to have the speed. I like light armor for that. Light armor allows your horse to ride fairly unencumbered. So there's two moons. There's this huge moon that seems to have been hit by some kind of asteroid, and then there's this tiny moon back here. I actually just noticed that there's two moons the other day, and I've been playing this game since it came out. Heading back now. Oh yeah, heading back to Meduli for sure. We've got uh, 3,000 ironwood. So between that ironwood, you know, this amber, the scoundrel head, the paws, all this stuff in here, I figure. You know, if I can sell those, if I can sell that ironwood at a good market rate, we can look at 35 to 40 gold for that, and another five to eight gold, hopefully maybe five gold, in terms of all the stuff we have to sell here. So this is a good time to head back. It's nighttime as well, so I've got the cover of darkness the whole way back. I mean, riding through an open field in, you know, uh, unencumbered moonlight is not the best. Now, this is all from the perspective of uh, high graphics settings. I know that players on low graphics settings can see other players at greater distances. So I imagine that everybody who is a kind of career PK... <sighs> Uh, plays in potato mode which is a shame because it's such a good looking game and there is a significant difference between uh, low and cinematic graphic settings this has been insanely lucky I can't I can't I cannot emphasize that this is giving people a false this is giving everybody a terribly false impression of what uh, the run between Meduli and the Colored Forest is usually like. I cannot stress that enough. I'm going to actually rest, have, ensure that my character's stamina is maxed out. My horse's stamina is maxed out. We're kind of on the last leg of the trip here. This is going to be the most dangerous leg of the trip. As we get closer to towns, there's going to be more people, more PKs, more dense of a population, obviously. And to my knowledge, Meduli, uh, maybe besides Tindrum, is one of the most populated towns. I know it seems crazy, but getting back, uh, even just getting back after something like this is a crazy sense of accomplishment. But to put it in perspective, I don't know if you can see that on stream. I'm kind of circling it right now with the cursor. That is the Meduli Tower. And again, if you were here earlier when I talked about distances, uh, <laughs> that is extremely far away. The rain just doubled up on us, which is good. It means people won't be able to hear us and they won't be able to see us even more. So, more is better. Odin, I've only just returned, but now I must go. I look forward to watching the video. Thanks for hanging out, Odin. I always appreciate the support. 
Uh, if you have any extra questions after you catch it later, leave me a comment and I will get back to you. Take it easy. Also, get the game. The Meduli run is now in full effect. Oh no. <laughs> two players, two players. This isn't good. Okay, they kind of backed off. They're coming. Oh boy. Oh boy, we've got a head start. I've got quite the head start. I am I really hope that they are interested more in the water buffaloes, the guars. Gore, gores, gores, guar, guar, guar gum. I have no idea what they are. Water buffalo, water buffali, the water buffi. Um, I hopefully they're more interested in them than me. How could they possibly know that I have 3,000 ironwood in my horse satchel? The Meduli Ironwood Run. Oh, it's not in my horse satchel. It's in my... They're going to have to fry this ironwood from my cold, dead prison wallet. Last time I got jumped, I killed the dude's bear and almost killed his horse. They're not still behind me. They're not still behind me, no. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they were there hunting leather. It looked like they were just herding the, the buffalo into uh, one spot. Oof. Tindermere guards. We've made it back to Meduli. Safe now in guard zone. 3,000 ironwood. That, that is what you call a successful, that is a successful ironwood run to, uh, or rather from, and then back to Meduli. We're going to take these resources, bank what we need, sell what we don't and craft what we can and put some shields on the market okay what do we have here so we have some resource bags some wood bags uh let's see if we can spread some resources out here so we have 30 300 so let's space out 3,000 ironwood even so what I do is like I was saying I usually block this down into 500s and sell it um, I'm not sure if that's what we're gonna do here I think what I'm gonna do is a bit of a test actually so I'll take let's say I take 1500 Okay. So this is for crafting. This is for selling. And we're going to see which generates more money over the long term. That's kind of my goal here. Uh, so I'll just take out all my gold. Thank goodness there's no thieving in the game yet. So we have scoundrel heads to sell, brown bear paws. Belbus paused to sell. Let's open Sherazad's backpack just to add to this crazy assortment of bags. Uh, wolf paused to sell. Razor bass. Razor bask? Razor bath. <laughs> Dusks to sell. Uh, malarium we are keeping. Bone tissue. Wow, 10,000. I've got 30,000 bone tissue. So this is extremely good for, it, it's a cheap, cheap way to train your crafting. Um, I have guard fur. I don't use it for anything at all. I'm gonna have to check the prices on the market before I just sell that. Uh, I will be selling this ground fur for sure. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. I'll fall off my horse. Oh. If you uh, get overweight, your horse, your horse ditches you. You fall off. Okay, 
Okay, let's try this again. So, these are things we're selling right away. These are things we are keeping rough amber, rough andertite, large rough all mandan, small rough amber, another small rough amber in the pile. Derizad's bags, we're selling the meat. We're selling all the meat, um, whatever's left of that bone tissue. As a matter of fact, let's get one of these 10,000s out and sell that. Sell the tallow, sell the horn. And what do we have here for the leather? We have 4,000. Even 1,000. Keep the leather. The leather is extremely usable. The rest of this is going to get sold. I'll sell this dire wolf meat and this wolf meat as well. Okay, and then we're going to... I'm going to take this gold. We're going to list three piles of ironwood on the market. So, this is uh, how I'm making money at the moment. One of the primary ways I make money at the moment is... What I do is I hop on the trade broker. And so I'm going to go to goods. We're going to resources. We're going to type in ironwood. So I've got a bunch up here. Six gold, 50 silver. That's a great price for 500 ironwood. Um, next nearest competitors in town. We have seven gold for 500, eight gold for 500, 25 gold for 1,000. I don't know if he expects more uh, for a greater quantity. Usually it works the other way. This guy, insane. He wants almost 400 gold for 10,000 ironwood. Um... I kind of understand his price reasoning based on the amount of effort it takes, but kind of based on the market, based on the market in any broker. So you can search by any broker in this market house, and that kind of shows you the the prices the world over. Uh, right now, I've got the best prices on the market, hands down, for Ironwood, and that's intentional. I'm I'm probably losing money. I mean, I'm certain if I was more patient. Like, look at these guys. Uh, maybe just because it's in Faburnum, but a thousand, a thousand for thirty gold. So you could get two piles of my five hundreds to get that a thousand for thirteen gold. Um, you know, fifteen for five hundred. That that's insane. <laughs> so right now I've got the best prices, and this is kind of my strategy. This is what I do. I hop onto the market. Uh, I kind of I I find a corner of the market where I feel as though I can. I'm willing to, not that I necessarily can, but I'm willing to undercut significantly, and that's what I've done here. So I'm going to add uh, kind of three more piles of 500, and we're going to see what sells better. I'm going to put some shields on the market after this that we're going to craft using some iron wood. So everybody can see a bit of that that crafting as well. So again, six gold, fifty silver, crazy deal for five hundred ironwood. So if you're catching the stream later and you're a huge fan of Mortal Online too, head to Meduli. There's really cheap ironwood. You'll make me rich and happy. I'm not even rich. There's people here who have are solo players and they're placing keeps. So those are like twenty five hundred gold. It's insane to me. I don't know how they do that stuff. We're gonna put all our cash money back in the bank. We've got some ironwood. We still have to go sell all of these things and everything that's in Sherazad. Except I am going to. Uh, I don't like bringing my horse in the bank. I think it's a bit of a jerk move because you can't get past people's horses to get out of the bank. Uh, I'm gonna bring Mr. Sherazad with me. Cannot just force your way through other characters, unfortunately. Banker here and make sure we have everything we need to take with us and to sell. Um, I don't want to destroy that. We're good in there. We're good there. We've got all the wood we need to craft. Uh, what do I need? 
I'm going to bring Anthropod Carapace. It seems to be doing really well for building certain things. I'm going to bring some Molarium. I need to get all the stuff that I'm not selling away from the right side of the bed. Everything over this side is getting sold. Everything over this side is going to be used in crafting. I just don't want to be accidentally carrying it and fall off my horse. Got some spare armor there. Uh, so I've got malarium here. I think I'm also going to try maybe to craft with some... Uh, emulge? Try some emulge. I don't have any steel or any kind of ore right now. But it's kind of crazy. Malarium and emulge seem to make extremely good materials for shield building. Ooh, selling first, selling first. There were some intense moments in the forest. Okay, so there's three gold right there. Thank you. Now let's open Sherzad and get a little crazy. Tire wolf meat. That way. Thank you. Uh, ground fur. Only the best for you. Uh, oh god, that sounded terrible. Deal. The reason I'm 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 kind of pulling this stuff over one at a time is so I don't Only become register as overweight and fly off my horse. Because <laughs> that happens. Welcome back. Yeah, there it is. I guess I could just get off the horse. It'd be Let probably me show easier. You. Deal. Okay, awesome. Seven gold. Wow. Only the best Eleven for you. gold, really. You. Uh, Eleven gold, two silver. Nice talking to you. Oh, I can still sell that. Heavy stuff. I have what you're looking for. Thank you. Please come again. And we still have all our materials here ready to go crafting. So another 11 gold. Um, like I was saying, if I can sell... I only put up three stacks of 500. But even if I sell those, that's uh, 19. That's 20 gold plus 11 gold. That's 31 gold. If I had decided to sell the other three stacks of 500, which will inevitably sell, um, that would have been another 19 gold. So that's what, 50 gold? 50 gold, an hour and 15, an hour of effort. That included a ton of travel, and I was taking my sweet time. That's not a bad kind of turnaround or hourly rate for gold for a solo player in Mortal Online 2. Um, so, I mean, if you, if you think that's, that's kind of rough, I, I wouldn't. That's really good. That's kind of the best turnaround I've done lately. Uh, minimal prep, minimal cost in equipment to get out the gate. I'd say that's a that's a four gold expedition, and the return after one hour is you know kind of ten times. Now I'm gonna build a couple shields. I did have existing resources, uh, but I would have gotten most of them from that adventure either way. So I'm gonna build a couple shields. We're gonna put them on the market as well. Uh, this character is primarily primarily a merchant. Uh, I really love the combat aspect of this game, but primarily a merchant. There aren't that many competent shield crafters, so somebody's got to do it. Oh, we'll get all our materials here. Ironwood is going to the core. I'll probably only get three or four shields out of almost 2,000 ironwood of how much wood shields cost to craft. This is an extremely time-consuming profession if you choose to get into it. Um, if you're just training, don't waste your time with ironwood. Use bone and gray wood or white wood, anything you can get the most yield from. If you are at my level, I'm at 100 round shields. I'm only at about 90 tower shields. Uh, but I haven't set out to train those just yet, so we're going to be building round shields here. Um, but if you're at high level, skill at 100, and you're planning to put weapons or shields on the market, 
uh, use your best material and see if you can get your money's worth. And that's that's the whole point of this experiment here. I think we're going to be doing heavy round shield. Uh, I haven't done a heavy round shield in a long time. We're going to start with our core material for our heavy rounds. It's going to be iron wood that's going to give us some insane durability that you want in a shield, right? It's just going to be blocking the longer it lasts, the more valuable it was coin. Uh, I'm going to try I'm going to try some anthropod carapace first, and we're going to give it a uh, full boss. Full boss frame. What, let's see what our options are. Flat boss, just a boss frame, a detailed boss frame, or a lion frame. Now, lion frame shields, this is what I'm using. 23, 63, 51. This has exactly the same makeup as this shield. So, now that one, however, was a large round. The one I'm using here is a large round shield. Uh, let's see what we can get out of this heavy round. I may even end up taking the best shield out of this batch and using it as mine, as opposed to uh, selling it. So we're gonna try with some. You know what? Let's let's get rid of the malarium since we already have a great. Let's. I'm gonna craft the exact same thing I did before: a lion frame shield with anthropod carapace and ironwood, just like this. Uh, except instead of malarium, I think what we're gonna try and use here is emulge. Let's see what kind of shield uh, we get out of this. So right now we have 23, 63, 51. Let's hit this and call this. What should we call this? Iron Woody. And let's signature that. Everybody knows it was made by the best shieldsmith in Meduli. Hold the craft. So huge chunk of iron wood gone from that. And let's see what kind of stats we're looking at. 2385, uh, 62, 78, 51, 20, 2385. So our new shield is lower, uh, 27 on this one. We have 62, 78, and last but not least, 51, 56, 51, 20. So right there, we know that emulge is kind of an inferior substance compared to malarium. Just to prove that, uh, let's see if we can do this again. And we'll finish this with Malarium. See if we can generate these same stats. So we have 2363, 51. 2363, 51. Just like clockwork, exact same stats, exact same materials. So that's going to be, these are going to be two really well, well priced shields on the market. Um, you notice we're down from 1200 to 686. I don't even know if we're going to get another large round shield. Let's see if we can kick out a heavy round shield. Since we know malarium is the better, the better resource here. Uh, let's see if, I don't think ironwood out on the outside is going to do well. I also don't think we have enough. We're going to use our malarium for this heavy round. We're going to try the line frame again if we can. If not, we may have to go to a different type of... Uh, I, you know what? We might even not be able to build this. Let's try to. We might do a small. Okay, nailed it. Uh, Ironwood lore increased to 96. We're almost there. 23. Okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. What do we have here? We have 2391. 2391. 6327. 6327. So heavy round and large round, if made with the same materials at maximum shield crafting, have the exact same kind of defensive uh, output. So these three shields, these are going to be some extremely high quality round shields on the market. And in case you're wondering, the benefit of the round shield is its weight. Now the shields contribute to armor weight. It means that people are going to want shields that are extremely durable, which if you look, check out the durability on these, this is insane. This ironwood is insane. 992, 933. 901. These are round shields. Easy to see over. Easy to use in combat. Massive durability. They're going to last forever. I mean, if you need to come back for a shield, you know where to find it. But if you buy one of these, you're probably got not going to need to for a while, unless you die. Otherwise, these are kind of buy one, keep it for a very long time type of shields. Uh, 
will stay. I don't like hurting my pet in the bank. some money and we are going to put in stuff. You have to take out money uh, before you head to the trade broker because you have to pay a fee to list items. Now I hope that I'm able to list these items and I haven't maxed out broker so we're gonna hold on first we're gonna check shields we're gonna check the competition the market right now uh, so let's hop off of those and let's see what we're let's see what we're looking at and we'll go to descending uh, just to get an idea but let's find maybe, maybe we'll go to ascending let's find a unexpensive shield that's crazy this guy's just being silly 28 uh 70 i mean I don't think any shield in the game is going to be worth 160 gold. No matter what, because those constituent parts aren't worth 160 gold. 23, 52, 51. Okay, so what do we have down here? 23, 62, 51. So we beat out uh, this guy's this guy's small tower. Uh, we beat it out incredibly. 23, 63, 51, and we have 19, 43, 35. He, he's hoping to get 25 for those. I don't think that's reasonable. Uh, these are even better shields here. Now, this is more reasonable right here. This is priced at 4 gold. Uh, 4 gold, 39 per shield. 24, 66, 56 versus 23, 66. See, again, uh, way overpriced here. It's 75 gold. It's, it's hard to sort out... Um, the one-offs like that but you'll kind of get a feel for what for what the market looks like so i'm seeing decent shields around the five gold mark the 439 i like these uh, i really like these this is malarium cross frame standard tower and that's 215342 with pretty bad durability at 500 I don't know if this guy's marking up his price based on the durability. It kind of looks like he is because he's got 1,100 on those. We have 900 on ours. That's twice as much durability with way more damage than these four gold shields. So my plan is going to be to list these shields for uh, probably 750. If I can get 750 for these, I wouldn't consider it an extreme loss. Uh, so... You know what? Let's let's go an even eight. Let let's let's go eight seventy five to give them some allure, maybe for seven days, and uh, we will want each one of those right onto the market. I should have priced that third shield a little bit lower since it wasn't as good as the other two, but uh, hopefully nobody scrutinizes too much. Okay, uh, that is a great, that was great. Uh, we're coming up on two hours here. I'm gonna call that the stream. Uh, that was the Meduli Ironwood run in a nutshell. We started here in Meduli, which the awesome, awesome city of Meduli. It's where my character, Dantioch, uh, lives. So if you're in the market for shields or ironwood, you should stop by. Or if you're a solo or on guild, or even if you're guilded, and uh, you guys are the good guys or the bad guys, uh, hit me up, talk to me in game. I'm always good to go on an adventure. And if you have any questions about Mortal Online 2, uh, and you're catching this video later, leave them in the comments. Uh, thanks everybody for hanging out in the chat for the stream. If you have any suggestions, and you noticed anything I could have been doing better, I would also appreciate comments about those. Uh, and, you know, I think I said this the last time I streamed Mortal Online 2, but I highly recommend you ignore any of the negative chatter about the game. Uh, pick it up, give it a try, form your own opinions. There's going to be things that frustrate you, like any game out there, but there's way more good to this game. And uh, in my opinion, it's worth, it's worth every penny. Uh, after that huge, great 
exit speech, it occurs to me I have no money uh, with which to stable my horse. So I highly recommend you stable your horse between logging in and logging out. In this case, I'm just gonna ride him and log out and hope he disappears with me. Uh, feed him first if you're gonna do this, because you just never know. But again, uh, thanks everybody for hanging out. And uh, let me know in the comments what you thought, and I hope to see you again. Take it easy.